Welcome to today's 3D print. Today we get into resin. Stay tuned while we go over the FL Sun resin printer. Alrighty, first things first, there's no unboxing. Um, I might have some alternative footage, but all my footage got destroyed for two episodes plus two unboxing and builds. So there will be no unboxing of the FL Sun or of the ANET or FL Sun. Oh, they're both FL Sun. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> the DLP printer and the QQ Cricut Delta, which is looking pretty nice so far. Um, I don't know what went wrong. It's something to do with this mic. It's injecting interference if it's near certain things. I don't know if it's that... UPS or if it's that power brick, um, but it, the the audio is destroyed. This seems to be working now. I've tested it a couple times. Um, I'm running the camera on battery again just in case. So hopefully I have enough battery. But um, so there won't be an unboxing. But thankfully there's not much of an unboxing for this printer. It comes in the package like this. Literally, there's nothing to assemble. Um, you take this top off and what little it comes with is inside. The power supply, the 8 gigabyte thumb drive, uh, some gloves and a uh, face mask and stuff like that, and that's it. Um, there's not much to it. The assembly is straightforward. You make sure the two screws on the top are tight. The instructions are very clear about that because I guess they ship it loose. Um, auto level, very simple. You loosen the four Allen key screws holding the build plate in place. Tell it to start the every time you power the printer off and power back on, it asks you if you want to do that again. Just hit next, next if you have not moved the printer. But otherwise, it'll move all the way down, flatten the build plate against the vat on the bottom, and then you tighten those four screws and that locks your bed level into place. Um, beyond that, good luck. <laughs> no, seriously, there's no instructions. At least I couldn't find any. I looked through everything. There was basically no instructions for how to use this thing beyond printing what was already on it. The thumb drive came with some files that were already sliced. Something called an MMS file. I believe it's proprietary. I'm not sure about that. So I saw something called Cobra Rings, and I was like, okay, I want to print that. And it printed this perfectly. No problems whatsoever. It's um, basically a ring with four Cobra heads, and you can even see the scales and pattern on the back of the Cobra backs. It really is pretty impressive. So then I printed the um, Zombie Hunter. Came out perfect. And I was like, okay, this is amazing. I want to print something of my own. So I was like, let's print a Marvin. You know, my the Marvins, I always print. You know, my Marvins. And I couldn't. I tried again and again and again and again and again. I could not make this thing print anything that I would feed it. What would happen is, I'll show you this, I don't want to leave it open too long because of how much light I have in here. Okay. This is the printer. These are the two screws that you have to tighten when you first get it. These two screws and these two screws, you loosen them, which makes this whole thing floppy. You start the homing procedure, which comes up automatically whenever you power the printer off, like when you unplug it or power it down. And it will move this all the way down into the vat. This here is your vat. Inside the bottom here is your ultraviolet light source and your LCD screen. Um, once it goes all the way down, you tighten these four screws, locks your bed into place. Um, that's it. I've never had to touch it again since then. Prints perfectly every time when I figured out how to make it work. <laughs> so um, what would happen is it would start printing and there's a there's a, a Teflon FEP film on the bottom of this vat. I mean, the vat has to be able to hold that liquid resin, you know, this stuff here, and um, not go into the LCD screen, of course. It's a, it's a basin, a vat. But it needs to be clear because the light has to shine through it to project your image onto your next layer. When I would print an included print, one of the pre-sliced files worked perfectly. When I would send one of my own files, the print would not stick to this aluminum build plate. You notice it's upside down. It builds from bottom up. Um, instead, it would stick to the FEP film. And that's a problem. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, you're supposed to use a scraper to clean out the vat, but that did not work. It stuck to that thing good. I ended up having to use a little tiny screwdriver to get the bits off of the vat when I noticed it. And, um, well, eventually I poked holes in the FEP film. <laughs> I was like, oh, great. I had to use scotch tape to patch it. Um, it worked. Hey, it, the thing kept working. I, I printed this with scotch tape patching holes in the FEP film. <laughs> eventually I figured out um, that it was a what I call burn time, because it seems like the right word. When the light turns on, it turns on for a certain amount of time. The instructions said 30 seconds, which is like um, uh, 30,000 microseconds or something like that. Yeah, about 30,000 microseconds. Not enough time. That ended up being what the problem was. Everybody said bed level. No, because if I switch back to one of the pre-sliced files, it worked every time. I switch back to that, it worked. I switch back to that, it worked. So the machine was fine. I was doing something wrong in a slicer, and there was insufficient instructions that came with the printer to tell you what to do. So, there are two profiles in the control software it comes with. Not the Creation Workshop, the other one, the Net Control software. That's what I've been using to slice. I haven't touched the Creation Workshop yet. Um, the one that says LCDK, for some reason, works better for me. I don't know why. Instead of the other one. So I use the LCDK. I had to make the initial layer burn time 100,000 microseconds. I figured this out when I decided to take a stopwatch to it. I loaded up one of the pre-sliced files and I hit go. And as soon as I saw that the light turned on, I started the clock. Actually, it counts on the screen. I noticed it went for over 100 seconds. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's not 30 seconds. That's over 100 seconds. I set that in the slicer. Boom. First time it worked great. Um, so once you get this thing set up, that's how you slice your own files. Um, a um, couple of things to be aware of. I'm going to make this a basically an intro how-to because um, I'm, I'm going to suggest getting this. This thing is freaking amazing. When you see my sample prints, it's going to blow your mind. Um, it's, it's just very cool. But um, once you get past the quirks, it's seamless. It works great. Um, make sure you net fab your prints because um, it, it, it doesn't like hinky prints. If you do something in the mesh mixer, make sure you do a combine when you're done. Otherwise, it gets hinky. Um, it'll only load one of the parts instead of all of them. And you cannot load multiple SDLs. If you load multiple, what happens is never ever load one of your STLs into the software for this printer. Copy it to a separate folder called your resin test folder and then load it into the software because you're going to change the file. You're going to scale it, you're going to rotate it, you're going to always make sure you hit center to make sure it drops it onto the bed the virtual bed in the software, and when you tell it to slice, it resaves the STL first. Now, I don't know if that's actually shrinking the STL or if it's just changing unit value, so the STL is unchanged, but just in case, I copy the STL so that when it resaves it, it's resaving the copy and not munging my original STL. Now, that's why you can't print multiple STL files. I decided with this printer, print height determines how long the print takes, not how much you print. Because whether I print something, you know, this big or something this big, one layer takes the same amount of time. Because it just turns on more pixels on the LCD display and projects the light. So your print density does not affect print time, at least very little. I think burn time adjusts a little bit but otherwise it's largely unaffected. Print height is everything. I printed this in 30 minutes. This thing's pretty big and I printed it in 30 minutes and yet this took four hours, okay? Because it's significantly taller. Four and a half hours, four hours, something like that. And this took 30 hours, 26 hours, okay? Because it's tall. So I wanted to populate the entire bed and get a whole bunch of prints at once. No, it won't do it. When you go to slice, it tries to save the STL file, but now you have multiple STL files, but it's trying to save one, and the software can't handle that, it crashes. So if you want to print multiple files, load up your files in the mesh mixer or something else that allows you to scale, set them up, arrange them the way you want, hit combine so it treats all of them as a single STL file, then you load that into this software and you'll have no problem. I was able to print super complex objects like the Fantasy Castle, no problem. So it's not complexity. It just can't handle multiple STL files because it's trying to save the STL files. But now there's more than one, but it's trying to save one and it doesn't know how to do that. So 
it took me a while to figure out that's why I couldn't print multiple files. So this video is basically going to be teaching you how to avoid all the issues that I encountered. <laughs> so let me get this cover back on. I don't want to cure the resin under all this light. By the way, this is the Starship Shipwrights Dole Telling Edition, 3D Printing Nerd Edition of his little Starship. So I'm printing that in resin at half scale. <laughs> it's cute. It's the uh, two thirds of the way done. Um, so, what are you going to need to mess with this? Okay, well, you're going to need your scraper. We'll get to that in a minute, but I have actually have a whole other video on why you're going to need that. You're also going to need some kind of a dead weight. I've been using this because it's heavy enough, because you're going to need to bump your scraper. Okay, you're also going to need some tissue paper, and this resin is washable. It's a new resin. You just rinse it out in water. Okay. Make sure you have your gloves. You can get a big pack of a hundred of them for like eight bucks on Amazon and use them. I don't know what is in these chemicals and I don't want to find out later on with a hospital bill. <laughs> it's probably not that dangerous. It's probably a sensitization thing. Like I know people who can't mess with epoxy anymore because they handled the epoxy too much with bare hands and they became sensitized to it. And that's probably what is going on with these chemicals. So just be safe, you know, ventilated room, don't sit this in your bedroom <laughs> and use gloves. Clean up if you get resin or anything. Alcohol, IPA, it dissolves it. Um, now, what else? Um, that's about it. Oh, a curing light. This has a UV LED inside. You have to cure the parts after you're done. So after you make this print, with your gloves on and you get it off the print bed, you go to the sink and you rinse it out in warm water and you rinse it off. And then you bring it back and you're gonna have to cure this because right now it's soft and sticky. Um, you take the same power supply the printer comes with and you plug it into the top of the unit here, sitting it on your desk and there's a UV light inside of here. A couple hours inside that and you're done. That's annoying because I need this to print with. And I don't wanna sit here and wait two hours for a part to cure while I'm printer's doing nothing, so I'm not even going to bother using the LED it comes with, or maybe I'll take it out of there and use it on a separate enclosure. So I've been sticking them on the windowsill to let them cure in the sunlight. But you can also go on Amazon and get something like this. I think I paid like 12 bucks for this. This is a USB powered um, nail salon curing thing for your nails. This one's, this one's nice because it's very fast. Um, and by the way, this process is exothermic, so don't cure the resin if it's touching you, even through gloves, because it gets very hot. <laughs> Only for a second, but it gets very hot. Um, you press the button, 12 watts worth of LEDs turn on, and it cures your print. Um, this is nice because I can just take my print, set it down. Can you even see this, what I'm doing? You can see it over here. And then I set this over top of it, and I just turn it on. Three or four cycles, it stays on for a couple of minutes, and then it turns off. Um, and then your parts cured, cured enough for you to mess with at least. So I figured out how to slice. Uh, first things first, use the measurements. Use the actual measure values on the screen because it is deceptive. It is a lot smaller than you think. So the first thing I decided to print was a Marvin. Here is the normal size Marvin out of PLA. I'm going to show you the Marvin I printed on here, but it's kind of pointless because you are not going to be able to see it in this camera. Here we go. Can I even zoom in enough for you to see this? There we go. There he is. <laughs> There's a little tiny Marvin next to a full-size Marvin. He can literally fit through, almost fit through the keychain hole. I can sit him right inside the keychain hole of a full-size Marvin. Let me get that back in the view. There he goes. You can sit him inside the keychain hole of a full-size Marvin. That's how tiny that Marvin is. And the details are there. You can see the eyes and the eyebrows. Even the little eye hook is there. I don't know if it has a hole. Maybe not. Here's your normal size Benji. So now I printed a ultra tiny little micro Benji. <laughs> Let me spank it closer. Yes, I can. Look at that. There you go. And all the details are there. The anchor holes, the hole in the stack, the flag hole, everything. 
it's all there. That is ridiculous. That is so tiny, it's crazy. Okay. This is fun. This is so much fun, it's crazy. So, next up I said, go big or go home, right? Get in the picture. Eiffel Tower. The detail on this, it had some issues. Um, but the, it's because of that. This is the one that had the tape on the bed when I was doing it. But let me show you this. Look at the top. All the details. Every little rung on this thing is present. That's ridiculous. The details on this thing are absolutely mind-bending that it was able to reproduce all that. Incredible. Let me give you some more details down here. All the little window panels on the actual tower. The little design and filigree below here. Everything. It even tried to get the railing. I think if I increased the burn time a little bit so the railing wasn't so flexible, and if that tape wasn't there, the railing may have come out, but the railing, you can see, got a little munged. This thing is incredible. By the way, the resin that comes with the printer, do not dip it in alcohol. Just wash it. It turns all white when you put it in alcohol, so you don't want to do that. Alrighty, so... That was working. I now knew how to slice things. I have not tried to slice anything yet that requires support. I have not learned how to do that yet. Because I do know you need custom support. So what I've been doing is I've been printing things that don't require support in FDM printing. So they shouldn't require support in here. And so far that's been working. Um, next up I went and bought some more resin. This is Wanhouse D7 resin, which I read online was compatible with these printers. So I bought a kilogram of it one liter is a kilogram and it's expensive $65 for one kilogram that's more expensive than protopasta and it's not as pretty as protopasta <laughs> um, but on the flip side this castle only cost me 88 cents and it's solid and the reason for that is it's so tiny so even though this stuff's expensive, your per print cost is going to be very, very low. When you see the details in this thing, it's going to truly blow your mind. Wait for the autofocus, there it goes. Even a little look at the down bottom, you see the little trees. All the little trees are there, all the windows are there, all the openings are there. All the little details, everything is there. It is truly mind-blowing what you can do with these things. And this is a $500 resin printer. 500 bucks. And it can do stuff like this. It is truly mind-blowing. And this didn't even take that long. I think this took, what, eight or nine hours? It wasn't that bad. I want to make a slightly bigger one so I can get a little more detail in there. Let me show you a close-up of that ball. There it is. Come on, autofocus. There we go. That's amazing. That's a perfect sphere, too. At least it seems like it. So then, I printed Frog King. Remember the Frog King? There he is. Come on. There's your Frog King. The autofocus is really not happy about focusing on something so tiny. That's your Frog King. I think I'm right on the edge. Yeah, I was right on the cusp of the focus limit. That's better. All the details are there. 
Next up, an itty bitty, teeny tiny micro Adelinda. Is that is really hard to get that into focus? There we go. Look at that. There it is, Adelinda, the singing serpent. This probably costs like a dime. It looks so tiny and yummy you could eat it. <laughs> it's over to the red Wanhao resin and I printed DG Aquaticus. There it is. Look at that. That is adorable. That is so tiny. Now you notice the white, the Wanhao stuff. You need to use alcohol to clean it because it's oil based. So you can't just wash it off. Um, you have to use alcohol to clean it up. If you get it on you, it's not coming off. You've got to dip your hands in alcohol. So I went to Dollar Tree and I got one of these vats. It's a, what, a 1500 milliliter, probably a two liter, two quart, two quart container. And I got four bottles of IPA. Four bottles filled this perfectly. So I just opened this up. I dipped my part in here from China. I got one of these. I use this for dipping the little parts, wash them off. Don't dip them in here too long because this does dissolve the resin, including the cured resin. So you just swish it around really quick, get it washed off. Make sure you have your gloves on. You can get these at Dollar Tree too until your Amazon order comes in. Um, swish it around really quick, then get your butt into the bathroom and rinse it off. Don't use your kitchen sink for this because the stuff splatters everywhere. If you have a utility sink, use that. And just be careful because this stuff really does get everywhere. Um, because that's oil based. This stuff is special, it's washable. It's a little different. So next up, I printed Aria. Let me see if I can zoom in for you. There is Aria sitting on her pedestal. I made this one a bit taller just so we could actually see her. But still super tiny. You can see here's my thumb, there's my finger, my index finger. Isn't that amazing? This machine is just mind blowing. You know what? This is um, actually 3D printing professor. I would love it if you use my affiliate link. You want one of these. Yes, you do. Don't think about it. You want one of these. Chess pieces. You can make stupidly, mind-blowingly detailed chess pieces with this. Something else interesting you can make with this kind of thing is model details. That would normally be very difficult to do. And you could also make Monopoly tokens. So if you want to make your own Monopoly piece that's actually the size of a Monopoly totem, well, here, you can play as Aria or Adelinda. I would make them a little bigger than this, about twice the size, but yeah, perfect. I can just see people making custom Monopoly sets with these things, especially at this price. And the cost of resin is, while very expensive, the cost per part is next to nothing compared to what you're getting. So I also found the limit on this printer. I tried printing this. It's a destroyer, a ship. And there are details on here the printer was not able to reproduce. But it still did a pretty cool job. There it is. This is a destroyer ship I found on Thingiverse. And there are details on this it was not able to reproduce. You can see it just barely got these cannons right here. But there's supposed to be a tower here and a guardrail 
all the way around the edge of the ship and they are not there because they're just I guess they're too small to resolve so I'm gonna slice the ship in half and double the size and see if I can resolve those details but it actually got the little gun barrels which you can see right there there's two in the back here and there's one up front right here the detail is just truly shocking And then the last print I made, I found this cool Aztec pendant. And I was like, that would be perfect to show off the detail capabilities of this printer. Look at that. That really is cool. I hope you can see that. I don't know. I have a limited view on the phone here of what you guys can see. So oh, there we go. That's shining nicely. Isn't that cool? You should subscribe to my Twitter because I'm going to be posting pictures like crazy from this thing. <laughs> it's just truly, truly shocking what $500 can get you today. I mean, it's just mind-blowing. Besides the post-processing, which is pretty extensive for these things, I mean, not really. It's not hard, but it's you know there is post processing. You gotta I have to dip this in alcohol, swish it around, rinse it off with water, put it under the UV light to cure it, and then you're good. And you gotta be careful not to touch things. But the actual printing process is as close to turnkey as you can get. I mean, you don't have to do anything on the printer. You click the the little hand. You click Home Z. Let it come all the way down. Make sure you Home Z first. And then you select your file and you click start. That's it. It's fully automatic. You don't have to do anything. Um, you can check to make sure your first layer is sticking. So let it go for about you know 10 or 15 minutes and then hit pause. It'll lift up the print bed so that you can inspect it and see if it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. But beyond that, it's just let it run until it's done. This is cool. I understand higher resolution versions of these are supposed to be coming out, 4K screen version of this, which would be, oh, mind blowing. Yeah, I want that. <laughs> but this is just incredible. I mean, the you can print things so tiny yet the details are still there. That's really incredible. That's it, I'm impressed. I mean, besides the absolute crap instructions, <laughs> I think we'll all right, we're all good. <laughs> it was just a four gigabyte limit. It reached the end of the file, so it stopped. I'm gonna have to do a lot of editing for this one, but this thing's amazing. Okay, so decide you want one. Links down below. Um, some things you should order first. Go on Amazon and type in FEP D7. And you'll, 19 bucks, you'll get four pieces of the FEP film um, for $19 shipped. This way, if you damage yours, you have spares. They're very cheap and these are the exact right size for this printer. I will have another video next week um, showing how to actually change the FEP film. It's, it's not hard. Um, although, once you learn how to use this thing, not a problem. Also, with this resin, if a part sticks to the FEP film, it's not a problem. Just get a cup this is a sacrificial cup you're going to use that for nothing but that you take your basin out and you dump it all into here and you let it sit in here it'll actually balance in here and you let it sit there you'll eventually see all the resin separate from the FEP film and come off like I'm Rain-X and then what you do is you just take some of your IPA put it inside the basin and swish it around and it'll actually dissolve and release any stuck parts that are on there so if you have that problem that'll take care of it no problem this way you never have to worry about prying prints off of your FEP film. But get that first layer burn time right, you're good. I'm increasing my multi-layer burn time with this stuff. I think it needs more burn. Um, I'm having problems with some larger prints coming apart. I think they're staying soft and they're pulling away because this stuff's a little more opaque than this stuff. So maybe not as much of the UV light gets through. So I've increased it instead of... Um, um, 10,000 microseconds. I made it 15,000 microseconds per layer, and I'm going to try that again because I have a special project I'm working on. It's going to be about a 110 hour print, 120 hour print on this, um, like four or five 30 hour prints <laughs> if it works. But um, 
Get your two quart container, get your gloves, keep a good stock of gloves, well ventilated room, your IPA 50% appears to work just fine. Make sure that after you rinse it off with the IPA, if you use the one house stuff, that you immediately rinse it off with water, otherwise you end up with all that white stuff that you saw in my DG Aquaticus Dragon. That's uh, residue from the alcohol, because when I don't rinse it off fast enough into the water, I get the white residue. When I do rinse it off, I don't get the white residue. The parts come out clean, you know, like this. They come out clean, no problem. This thing's amazing. I'm having so much fun with this. <laughs> um, it's just, I, I, I look forward to every night coming home, finding a cool new print, and it is great. Um, as far as getting the prints off, the best way I have found to get the prints off the print bed, my tool is covered in the resin, so I don't want to touch it with my bare hands. But um, you put your glove on, all right? You take your tool and you hold it like this, and you put your tool up against the um, edge of your print with the bevel facing down so that it goes up into the aluminum bed. Once you have it there, your fingers here will catch your print when it falls off. You then take your weight or a little mini hammer or whatever and you tap, tap, tap to get this underneath the print. And you'll go about halfway and the print will pop off and land in your hand. Take the print in your hand, dip it in your IPA, swirl it around, you know, good five, six, maybe 10 seconds, get it rinsed off. Bigger prints might need more, then right away into the warm water and rinse it out. Keep it in your hand. If you're printing little stuff, be careful. It will float out of your hand and flush down the sink. I haven't done that yet, but I can see it happening. Um, you might want to use some kind of strainer and rinse the part off. Rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, rinse it, rinse it. Make sure it's nice and clean. Then under your UV light, your part cures. Once you have rinsed your part, it is safe to touch with the bare hand. You don't have to worry about that anymore. I've reused the same glove a whole bunch of times. After I pull it out and it's dried off in the IPA, you know, I just lay it on top of my IPA and it's ready for use next time. And that's it, super easy. I'll make more detailed videos on how to change the FEP film and on how to um, pop the parts off. I'll also make a more detailed video on how I learned how to use the slicer and change the settings on that. Um, check out um, Angus's mesh mixer hollowing video. Um, if I can figure out how to do that, I'll make a link for it somewhere. I don't know how to do that yet. But um, that video is what I use to learn how to um, work with this stuff. Because um, for some of the bigger stuff, all this stuff is solid. You know, it's so small, it's solid. But for some of the bigger stuff, you're going to want to hollow it because otherwise you're going to blow a lot of um, resin. <laughs> and for the bigger stuff, the resin can get very expensive if you don't make it hollow. But this thing is amazing. It is just mind-blowing how amazing this printer is for the price. I'm blown away. I'm going to put up pictures at the end of the video showing you close-ups of these things that I've printed. It's just, it's remarkable. I mean, we went from, you know, two and $3,000 printers to $400 CR10s and now $500 resin DLP printers that can make um, <laughs> 0.05 millimeter layer height. And I have suspicion this might be capable of 0 .0, um, 0.25 layer height. Um, or 0 0.025. 25, um, 25 microns. I believe it might be capable of 25 micron layers. I've seen that number listed in a few specs for the Micromake L2, and this is a Micromake L2 with an FL Sun tag on it. So this might even be capable of that, but at the minimum, it's capable of 50 micron layer heights. That's mind blowing. That's 0 0.05 layer height allows you to. This was not printed like this. This was printed like this. It was printed flat, and every detail is here. It's truly remarkable. This this technology is amazing. I cannot wait until we can do larger things and lower the cost of this resin. If we can get this resin down to around thirty dollars a kilogram, and uh, at least double the X and Y um, resolution of these printers. So 4K screens should allow you to go to like an 8 or 9 inch LCD. Hopefully somebody will make something like that. You know, sub thousand dollars. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I love this thing. The hardware so far appears flawless. I've had absolutely zero issues with the hardware. All of my problems are 
software and instructions. Very, very bad instructions. And even the software is not that bad once you understand its limitations. You know, no multiple STLs. Be careful, it saves your STLs. You don't want to overwrite a good one. But beyond that, it's the hardware is, is flawless. I have, it's never crashed, it's never given me a problem. It's Once I figured out the burn settings, I've never had a print fail to stick to the print bed. It's it's as close to turnkey as you're gonna get for 3D printing. It's just too bad we can't let students and kids use this because you don't want them messing with this stuff. <laughs> but it's, I'm dazzled. <laughs> I'm excited, it's, it's, you can do some pretty amazing, this blew me away. The, uh, the, the, the picture you're going to see at the top of this is going to blow your mind what this thing is capable of. And this little Adelinda is so adorable. It looks like candy. I just want to... <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Stay tuned. You are going to see more videos about this printer in the future. You can guarantee that. If I get the Anycubic Photon, I will compare the two of them. Um, they're on holiday right now, so I have no idea when that's going to happen. I don't even know if they've stocked them yet, so it might be a month from now. Hopefully, I'll get one, and I can compare the two. Plus, I really want to. <laughs> you guys have a great night. Thank you for watching.